welcome to Whiskey Whims with me, Stuart. Uh, today I'm going to add on to my unchill filter, non chill filter series where I try and do a review without any notes um, and also go through the uh, video in one take without any cutting. But there will be editing as always normal um, to make myself look stupid. So <laughs> we've got today a Blair Athol 10 year old by independent bottler James Eady. This is bottle number 188 of 317. It's uh, been matured in a recharred hogshead, single cast, cast strength, 56.2% ABV. I've only reviewed one other James E. Day and it was a Kalila and it got a whiskey bin. Now, I am not the biggest fan of Kalila and a lot of people really rave about Kalila, so maybe that's my fault. But uh, yeah, hopefully this Blade Athol is different. As you all know, I love Blade Athol. So I'm just trying to see what it's got in the back, if it's got any tasting notes or anything. I don't think it does. Um, and I can't remember if this came in a tube. I may have had a cylinder, but I've, I've removed it anyway. So we'll just get right into it. There's that, that, that Blade Athol distillate, that kind of sour, that little sourness to it, sour tang, um, yeah, tangy. I always link this to Blade Athol, this kind of smell, this tangy. It's almost like potato-ish. <laughs> but this this is just, um, it, sometimes in the Blade Athol, and uh, this is probably why a lot of people don't like Blade Athol, um, this scent can be very overpowering and too strong. But for me right now, it, it's, it's fine, it's perfect. It's a nice sour tang. Um, almost raw potato smell. It's, it's very, very thick on the nose and not thick in sticky sense, but more thick as in like a creamy, um, luxurious kind of, I don't know, like a whipped cream or a thick cream, clotted cream or something. Let's go cl clotted cream. Yeah, I think clotted cream is, is, is the right one. Just a nice, thick, luxurious cream. I don't know what makes it luxurious, but yeah. Um, there's definitely wood interaction there. Um, yeah, a little bit of a char. Did, did they say char? Didn't I? Yeah, recharred hogshead. Yeah, there is a little bit of a charred wood um, element there. I was just trying to see if the bottle had any kind of char uh, sediment in it. Sometimes when you get a charred whiskey, you can get a little bit of sediment at the bottom. But yeah, there is. There's a charring charcoal. Quite. Um, Subdued on the nose though for a, a 56.2% ABV. I can take a, a huge sniff of that in and it's, it's really not attacking the hairs, the nose at all. So I wonder if the palate will correlate with that, if it will be almost subdued, not as strong as the ABV suggests. A little winey, um, white wine possibly, kind of vinegary um, type, like white grapes that scent. It is a very light coloured whiskey and that gives it that kind of white wine effect. A little bit of um, possibly like a, a burnt out, not charcoal, not charred, um, more like the remains, I'm trying to think, kind of like a, a dust in like a soup um, smell. Yeah, let's go with soup. It's a little sooty. A little grassy, suggesting it's young, uh, it is 10 year old obviously, but a little grassy element, wet grass, damp grass, or maybe reeds, like river reeds, something like that. Yeah, I think this is, nose is nice, it's um, got a lot going on, a lot of variations, quite evolutionary. <laughs> Uh, it's quite adaptive or in, that, in that sense, it's changing from that creaminess, that sourness, uh, to the grass elements, the, the damp. A lot going on for me, it's a nice nose. It maybe doesn't sound nice, but it, it's pleasant. The, the palate. Mm. Hmm. Oh. That's strong. <laughs> the palate is beautiful. Oh, it's, um, yeah, you're getting the char through again. A nice kind of 
charred vanilla interaction that just combines the two um, and they marry real well together, tie well together. Really nice mouthfeel. Um, I don't know how else I can describe it, just creamy, but also uh, like kind of charred. I'm trying to think, it's almost like having <laughs> not a cheese, but, a, but cheese on a barbecue or something. So it's creamy like cheese, but it's not tasting like cheese, but then you're getting that charred element. I'm, I'm kind of picturing like halloumi on the barbecue, minus the halloumi flavour, if that makes sense. I'm trying to describe it and I can't. Um, it's, I don't know, it's like a creamy char mixture and it's actually just lovely, it's fantastic. There's possibly a little bit of, um, I can what is that flavour? It's like herbal, herbally, or um, botanical, I'm trying to think, is it eucalyptus maybe? Yeah, there's, yeah, there's like a eucalyptus kind of flavour, there's a, a kind of menthol um, mintiness at, at, towards the end of the, the palate, it's like I said, it's strong, it's robust in the palate, it's it, the mouthfeel, um, very, very luxurious again, that word, uh, voluptuous, uh, that's, does that, does that make, does that translate, does that correlate to the mouth, uh, voluptuous, but yeah, really, really fascinating in the mouth, uh, not too many flavours there that I'm picking out at the moment, maybe more thyme, mm -hmm. Maybe more whiskey. But yeah, it's definitely that, that cream and um, charred element that are dominating this. There's a real sweetness uh, with the palate as well. I was trying to figure it out. It touched the, the, the tongue initially and it, once that creaminess came through, I forgot all about the sweetness. But there is a real strong sweet flavour and I'm trying to think what it could be. Like, oh, is it not honey or not syrup? It's like a almost candy floss, like a car, kind of caramelized burnt sugar. I think I'm going to go with candy floss. A nice sweet, um, yeah, because that's basically what candy floss is, isn't it? It's warmed up sugar, um, and they, they they spin it. Do they spin it? Is that how they make it? Anyway, candy floss for sure. I'm really enjoying this palette. Uh, not a lot. I don't think I've mentioned a lot. But I'm maybe repeating myself quite a bit, trying to just remember what I've said. But it's really fascinating, and I think you could delve into this and find a lot more, strip it back. Um, but at the moment, I, I'm enjoying it the way it is with those sweet, creamy and uh, burnt flavours. So the finish, finish is long, uh, mainly that wood coming through, a little creaminess, not as creamy on the finish. The finish just paves the way for a, a wood, bitterness, drying, uh, possibly some of that white grape, white wine, from the palate coming through in the, uh, the sorry the nose coming through in the finish now so yeah that's that that's made its way to the finish uh i'll see if i can get anything else yeah the, the mint as i said that's it's on the palate and it's almost encroaching on the finish it's there in the finish for sure more of like a spear spearmint now um, like, like chewing gum, yeah it's very very fresh, uh, the grass possibly coming through again uh, but more of a, is it dried? Nah it's still wet, it's still a wet grass in the, the finish, uh, yeah I've enjoyed this, uh, maybe more so because it's Blair Athol but single cask as well yeah lovely and uh, the high ABV so we'll get down to my, uh, the ways I rate my whiskey, uh, the three factors that it, it needs to kind of uh, appease. <laughs> um, the first being, would I buy it again? Uh, the second being, would I recommend it? And the third, do I think it's worth it? So I think I mentioned this was 55 to 60 pound. If I didn't, then I've mentioned it now. Uh, I think it's worth it. You're getting a single cast whiskey, you're getting non-chill filtered, no added colouring, cast strength, 
we're getting a lot of details on this bottle as well um so i mean yeah i think it's worth it for the if you're looking at this in the shop and trying to decide um i think that's a good price for what is on the bottle the contents yeah similarly i think it's a uh, worth the price um for the, the liquid for the juice for the flavor i'm getting from it would i buy it again no because there's too many blairatho for me to try uh, I, need, I need to keep getting through them so I can try them all, uh, collect them all. So I wouldn't buy it again now that I've had it, but I would recommend it. I, I would recommend trying this. If you like Blair Atho, if you like a bit of a challenge, this is a kind of challenging whiskey. Um, and it will get you thinking, I think. It, uh, I feel. It will get you thinking, I think. It will get you thinking, I feel. It's um, got a lot going on, quite complex, quite a lot of depth to it. So, yeah, that's my review. Thanks for watching. I've been Stuart. This has been Whiskey Wins. I'll see you later.